Let's start. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our session. This is going to be um, a really great experience, and I'm really excited to welcome you to the Hackathon Research Infrastructure Roles Documenting the Impact and Best Practices of Big Team Science. And I'm pleased to welcome Anne Lee Steele, Arielle Bennett, and Jennifer Ding from the Alan Turing Institute um, based in the UK. So how this is going to work is we're going to record and talk through the first 15 minutes, and then we'll be recording the last 15 minutes. But enough for me. Um, please welcome speakers. Thanks so much, Grace. I'm just going to share my screen here. And thank you so much, everyone, for joining us um, from whatever time zone you're calling from. All right, so um, welcome to our Research Infrastructure Rules Hackathon. Um, really happy to be here at Big Team Science today. I'm really happy to talk more about research infrastructure and research infrastructure rules, uh, and also to hear more about your experiences over the next hour and a half. Um, and I think with that in mind, we'll do a little round of introductions first, um, starting with myself. Um, I am Anne Lee Steele. I am the community manager of the Turing Way, a project you'll be hearing more about in a second. Um, I help to facilitate contributions to the project. Um, and then I'm also working on developing internal systems to ensure its uh, sustainability and maintenance. And I'm working with a team of folks, including Ariel and Jen, in order to do this work. Um, but I'll leave it to Ariel and Jen to introduce themselves. Um, maybe Ariel, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Ariel Bennett. I'm the program manager for the Tools, Practices, and Systems program at the Alan Turing Institute. I'm a Turing Way core contributor as well in my free time and also as part of my job. Um, I mainly write in the guide on ethics and also collaboration as well. And I am super excited to be here today. Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Ding. Um, like Ariel, I'm another Turing Way core contributor um, and I'm mostly writing on licensing, specifically machine learning licensing um, and also open source sustainability. Um, my role at the Turing is called Research Application Manager, which we'll um, sort of get into in this presentation, but also in a talk later today, um, a few hours later, if you're interested in understanding more about how we approach um, applications and real world impact um, through the RAM role. Awesome. So a little bit of a summary of what we'll be working through together today. We'll do a quick kind of slapdash zoom through uh, what the Turing Way project is. And then I'll pass it on to Ariel, who will talk through what um, is research infrastructure and what are research infrastructure roles. And with a little bit of, about more about that, uh, then we'll pass it on to Jen, who will get us started with the discussion and shared writing part of um, our time together. And then we'll spend the last few minutes or so uh, doing a bit of a share out of what you all have um, discussed and also just talking about what we want to do with all of the writing that you'll be doing together. Great, so a little bit more then about the project that all three of us are a part of. So really what is the Turing Way project? So it's just on one hand a set of open source guides for data science and research um, or as I sometimes say, something like a kind of like a small Wikipedia uh, full of information about everything from peer review to research data management to using personas for research communication to research ethics, activism for research and much, much more. Um, we're hosted at the Alan Turing Institute, um, which is the UK's National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. But it's really important to say here that we're hosted by, but are not exclusive to. And we collaborate with experts really from institutions all around the world. And so while the Turing Way is a book, a set of shared practices, um, it's also very much a global community, an open source project, um, and a culture of collaboration. And in order to enable this, we take a lot of cues from the world of open source. So a little bit more about the guides themselves. The Turing Way began as a guide for reproducibility by Dr. Christy Whitaker, who gathered together a small team of allies and, and fellow researchers to write initial chapters and best practices for reproducibility in research um, with the addition of Dr. Malvika Sharon, who's now the co-lead of the project um, and here today with us. 
Um, the Turing Way grew into five guides uh, related to project design, communication, collaboration, and ethical research. And we also record the, the practices that you, we use within our own community, uh, within a handbook so that it can be used by others as well. Um, I will flag here that none of these guides are meant to be read from front to back um, or from cover to cover. Uh, they're really meant to be used as a reference for your work um, and as you need it. So uh, we encourage you to, to look at a term, a tool, a, an idea uh, that you use in your own work uh, and return to it as you need. So with this in mind, a little bit more about how we work as a community, again, taking a lot of cues from the world of open source um, that aims to practice a kind of distributed collaboration in this shared documentation project. Um, we really aim to be open all the way down, which means hosting our project openly on GitHub, um, often, um, a, again, a platform often used by open source software developers. Uh, we host everything here from our five guides to the community handbook, to project management, conference notes, um, and being as open as possible and as closed as necessary, we aim to close this knowledge gap and, and the silos between folks involved with data science and, and research across different contexts, fields, geographies, and really try to make collaborative documentation as, as easy as possible for everyone. So what this translates to in real time is a series of um, uh, community calls and, and events that we run throughout the year, including things like collaboration cafes and book dashes. And so the event that we're running with you all this, um, this afternoon, uh, the morning or evening, depending on where you're calling, is really kind of drawing from a lot of those practices that we use within our reoccurring calls um, and practices that we use within our own community. So with this in mind, um, we've come a long way as a project. Almost after four years now, we have over 250 plus live chapters, over 390 direct contributors in the GitHub repository, uh, thousands of users of, um, of the guides, and over 14,000 downloads of the images that you might've seen distributed throughout all this presentation. If there's anything you can actually take out of our talk today, aside from many, many, um, many, many effects about research infrastructure, it's that all of these images uh, that you see are actually licensed under a CC BY license, which means that you can also use them for your own work. Um, and the Turing Way has also been cited in policy, education, advocacy, and training context as well. So to stop here for a moment to say that while it's the three of us presenting to you, um, we really are representing um, a much, much larger community of folks that have made the Turing Way what it is. So with that, I'm going to pass the mic to Ariel. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Um, and, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, so uh, the title, we've got the, this phrase research infrastructure roles in our title of our hackathon. Um, and I just want to hark back. There's a, a long standing joke in data science and artificial intelligence that if you ask um, four scientists in a room what the definition of artificial intelligence is, you'll get five different definitions. Um, I feel the same way about infrastructure. If you ask four people what infrastructure means to them, um, you, you will get five different answers. And you can also see some of the variety of different answers that we have in our shared notes document as well um, from our icebreaker question. What do you think of uh, when it comes to research infrastructure? Everything from scaffolding, uh, people and methods, how systems are organized, people in building and maintenance roles, et cetera. Um, so if we go on to the next slide, um, to bring it all the way back to big team science, uh, coordinating big team science, coordinating the people of collaborative research projects and the tools that they need to use uh, is often one of the biggest blockers in addressing large scale and ambitious research questions. These massive collaborations, CERN, uh, everything from CERN all the way down to, you know, talking between two labs requires tools, practices and systems, uh, hence our program name, um, in order to collaborate effectively. Um, so it's incredibly aligned and overlapping with big team science. Um, and you can see this belief is so embedded in how we work at the um, Alan Turing Institute that it's the name of the team that we work in as well. Um, and from our perspective, our conceptualization is that all of these things, these tools, these practices, these systems are all part of the research infrastructure in the same way that, you know, our buildings, our roads, our food supply are all part of the infrastructure of, of day to day life. Um, because you can't get along without those things. 
Um, so next slide, please. And particularly when we think about open infrastructure, this is usually equated with open source tools in particular that enable technical collaboration, um, such as the tool that we're gonna be using today, which is GitHub. Um, and so and other open source software that we might use in our project. But for us in the Turing Way community and in the tools, practices and systems community, we tend to take this definition a little further and expand the definition of infrastructure in the process. Next slide, please. Um, so beyond just simply providing the tools for people to help uh, to support their collaboration and help them to do this big team science that is so important to addressing the fundamental challenges of the research that we do today, um, it's also important to coordinate the people um, in these uh, in these uh, collaborations and to have people in the roles to actually do the connection. Some of the hardest parts about getting a collaboration going and getting people to work together, particularly if you're trying to coordinate across different cultural boundaries or you're coming from different perspectives, say for example, from industry and you wanna collaborate with academia where the motivations, the ways of working, the cultural styles are all very different. Um, you need people in these roles to also provide the infrastructure, the, um, the cadence, the programming to help you do this big team science, to help the key um, development of the human interactions like building trust, uh, finding common ground, understanding each other's motivations, keeping people up to date with what everyone is working on when you don't have a shared notice board, for example. Um, and so that's really, really critical in the work that we do. And so this is why we think about the tools, sure, but we also think about the human infrastructure um, in uh, big team science. And next slide. And we call these research infrastructure roles. Now you'll see them referred to as various different things. Um, I've recently collaborated on a paper that describes them as team infrastructure roles. Um, you'll see them described in various different ways, everything from academic support to um, technicians, for example, but there's a huge, huge variety of them. And we've got some examples here um, of uh, titles and uh, role descriptions um, that you can find kind of in the wild and that we've come across um, in our travels as well. And this is one of my favorite images as well. This researcher environment really demonstrates how we see these roles as contributing to the overall makeup of how research is done and how researchers experience, um, experience their work as well. Um, so we, this is a bit of audience participation at this point. We would like everyone to head over to the, um, uh, the shared note document that hopefully uh, Jen has um, shared has shared in the chat again, um, because we'd like to ask you, next slide please, if you recognize any other of these roles in your institutions, do they come in the form of IT managers? Are they thinking, are they, uh, do you recognize a data steward, but instead it's called a research data manager? Um, these types of things. We'd love to hear more examples of different role titles and different role focuses, because this is a very broad, amorphous group of people with a whole range of specialist skills that are absolutely critical to getting big team science and research done, but we don't have great ways of describing them, of mapping them, of understanding um, how they're emerging and evolving just yet. We have some really standout examples in research software engineers, et cetera, but a lot of these roles are very unmapped and undocumented. And one of the things we want to do is um, to help kind of improve the mapping and understanding of these roles as well. So if everyone wants to head over and add some of their own thoughts to this down on line 58, um, we've got one in there that's research infrastructure developer, which is very true. I think that's great. I'd love to find out what the job description is for that. Um, if anyone wants to add that in or add a link. And also if anyone wants to share um, things in the chat or uh, would like to uh, unmute as well, this is an opportunity to kind of share if you recognize these roles in your institution as well. Uh, 
and I will say this is a warm up because we are about to move into the participatory section of the hackathon. <laughs> So if you would like to, it, like this is a, a good way to get your uh, uh, thinking muscles exercised. Okay, we've got partnership development managers, grant application managers, project officer or manager, community engagement leads. Yeah, I love that one. That's really important um, skill set that is definitely not taught as part of your standard researcher arsenal toolkit. Uh, communication managers, data wrangler. Yeah, I love all of these and these are all really interesting. And if you have any more links or information on those, then please do drop them in the uh, in the notes as well. Event managers. Yep. Yep. All of these are great. Wonderful. Um, and then I think, am I handing over to Jen for this next bit? So feel free to keep adding your ideas in the chat as they, as they come to you as well. Uh, but I am gonna hand over to Jen now for uh, the next steps because we've done a bit of uh, introing and, and waffling, but now it's time to uh, hand over to you guys. Thanks, Ariel. Um, so as Ariel has alluded to, we are about to begin a more interactive bit for the hackathon. Uh, but first, um, a few things to share. Um, just to recap, we've talked a little bit about the Turing Way and how um, we work, as well as research infrastructure role. So now it's time to turn it over to you. Um, and specifically today, what we'll be looking at um, is the research infrastructure roles chapter on the Turing Way. Um, and here we have some information that captures the motivation for what, why these roles exist, um, and also some examples of roles that we have at the Turing, such as community managers, data stewards, um, research software engineers, and research application managers. And we hope to build out this chapter with you. So um, in response um, to this question that we posed earlier, we got a lot of great answers. Um, and we'd like to live add that now just to demo a bit how we work um, at the Turing Way and also to foreshadow a bit how we'll be capturing um, the content you contribute today into the Turing Way. So um, as mentioned earlier, we work collaboratively through GitHub, and here's a little peek at what that looks like. So we've opened this PR about building out the research infrastructure roles list, and we'll do a bit of that now. So I'm going to just go to the file where we have that, click Edit. Um, and add some of the ideas you guys have suggested um, into this list. So we have research infrastructure developer. I'm just gonna check that I'm not duplicating. Partnership development manager, um, grant application manager, and maybe just to not take up too much time right now, let me just add these three for now and I can do some more behind the scenes later. Uh, but just to show you guys what we'll be doing is um, committing these changes to the PR. So let's say add new RARs from BTS Con 2022 and commit that. And later I'll do a bit more of this behind the scenes so you don't have to see me copy and paste um, over and over. But um, the idea is after we then merge this PR, hopefully later in the session, we can see the results go live into the Turing Way and you can see your contributions um, in um, the Turing Way itself. So now I'll introduce what the hackathon portion of um, our event's going to look like. Um, essentially, we're gonna have three breakout rooms, one on sustainability, one on strategy, and one on personal experiences. And on the slide, you can see the kinds of questions we're gonna pose within those rooms. Um, and so something we'll ask you to do right now is if you could add a one, a two, or a three next to your name on Zoom or type it into the chat. Um, I'll do a little demo to show you how to rename um, add this to your name. So if you click on participants, I don't know if you can actually see this pop up, you probably can't. Um, but after you click on participants and you hover over your name, you can click the more drop down um, menu and then click rename. Um, and then 
after you rename yourself, you can add, let's just say the number two in my case to um, the name. So then we can see that um, I'm asking to be in breakout room two. Um, but again, if that sounds way too complicated, uh, feel free to just type one, two or three into the chat and we can um, draw from there where you'd like to be. Um, so just to um, add, do a little bit of housekeeping, um, this portion, this um, hackathon portion will take place for 30 minutes. Um, and then we'll come back into this room to do a little bit of share out. Um, and yeah, let me see if there's any um, other things to share. So just some things to share in terms of um, tips for success. We have different shared pads for everyone to use in their room um, so we can capture everything that's discussed. And ultimately, um, just like that list of research infrastructure roles, we will be adding the contributions um, to the Turing way. So um, if you prefer you know, to share anonymously, that's totally fine too, and you can let us know. Um, but as for now, if you could just um, rename your Zoom name um, to choose where you'd like to be, we can start um, splitting everyone up. The um, beginning before we went off and uh, discussed uh, in our breakout rooms, um, Jen added some of our suggestions um, for uh, job titles down here. She's gonna add the rest another time. Um, but what we're going to do now is uh, live merge the contributions that uh, you folks have suggested um, from today. Um, we had lots of conversations about the best way to get the content from today into the Turing way. This is sort of a we wanted to give you a flavor of how this works, because actually getting everything formatted and stuff in the time we have allow allowed is uh, quite tricky, but what we're going to do later on with all of the notes from today is write them up and also um, put them into the book itself as well, so that um, your content, your thoughts, your points that you've raised today, uh, the stories you want to share will all be available um, as part of the as part of it. And so, if you have a GitHub handle, please do put it in the shared the original shared notes document, so we can add you for content or editing or um, however else you'd like to contribute. Um, I have actually already done that for for Grace down here via our all contributors bot. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't find you, Mahmoud, on um, on GitHub. Uh, all contributors couldn't find you. Um, so if you want to update your um, your GitHub handle, then we'll we'll try that again. Um, but now Grace is included in our um, contributor record for content and suggesting um, research infrastructure roles titles. Um, so to actually get this in the book, the first thing we do is head over to the actual uh, to the preview of uh, the changes that we've made. We need to make sure that uh, it looks okay. We know we'll fill these in later, so I think we'll let those slide. But it's um, you know basically because we we write um, on Markdown and then we have to have that integrated into the book. It's worth double checking that things look how you would like them to look. Um, that looks okay. Uh, somebody has already reviewed this a few days ago, which is great, um, and had Anne has approved this. Uh, yesterday, which makes things a bit easier and smoother. But now what we can do is hit merge pull request. And adding to the list of research infrastructure role, list of job titles from contributions from hackathon participants. Thank you. And then we can confirm the merge. Great. So now if we go into the Turing way, and we head down to Guide for Collaboration, Research Infrastructure Roles, 
that is not right. Why has that not merged? <laughs> I knew there was going to be something. Uh, <laughs> do I just need to clear my cookies? Is that the problem? And <laughs> you might need to do a hard refresh, which could happen. Hard refresh. Okay, great. Let's um I'll close this because this is confusing. That's the preview. No. Hold on. Uh, we will try in a fresh browser. Um, just to double check. It should have merged. Okay, there's no errors or anything. So we do expect that it will show up. Can you see um Firefox? My Firefox. Okay, great. The throwing way. Uh, it takes a few minutes to render in the book. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Hopefully it will be in here now that we spent a bit of time. Um, oh, no, that's remote collaboration. It's not in there yet. It will be soon. Okay, I'm going to stop doing this because uh, it, it gets more painful after the second go, but it will be in there. We'll make sure that everybody uh, who isn't already listed as a contributor is um, listed as a contributor. And then I think I'm handing back over to Anne for uh, final bits and pieces. Is that right? Sounds good. So I'll share my screen here. Uh... Okay. All right, is everyone able to see my screen okay? Great, all right, so uh, just a little bit about the next steps. Oh, I can't see your screen yet, no. Not yet, how's that? Yeah, there we go. Wicked, okay, cool. So um, we'll be getting all these next steps sort of the next couple of days. Um, we were really excited to add in this list of research infrastructure rules, but we also hope that in these kind of three uh, rooms that and the shared discussions that you've had together, that we'll be able to um, also maybe put the places and pieces in place to be able to uh, contribute a new chapter, new content, or more information that I think a lot of other folks um, will find really interesting and useful for their own work. So with that in mind, um, I encourage you to join a community call. We have collaboration cafes that we run every first and third Wednesday of the month, uh, co-working calls uh, that happen every Monday, though those are currently being trialed as more of an organizational team stand up. Um, I run office hours every Friday. We can drop by to ask a question, uh, do some co-working together, um, but we also run uh, monthly and biannual events um, like fireside chats, uh, book dash, uh, community share outs and all sorts of trainings. I do want to plug here that with Georgia, who is currently in the call with us, um, we'll be running a um, fireside chat tomorrow on supporting citizen and participatory science communities. Um, it's going to be a really interesting conversation. We have some great people joining us uh, tomorrow at 4 p.m. British Standard Time. So uh, we can add the Eventbrite link in the chat here. Um, hope you'll join us. But those are all the obligatory plugs that I'm sending your way. Um, really want to just note here that there are many different ways of getting involved with the community. Um, we've worked together to, um, you know, add to a chapter on research infrastructure roles, but uh, if you're interested, you can also um, uh, fix a typo, change a link, um, and it looks like, I'm going to take a moment here, actually, it looks like I'm going to open this link to stop everything in real time and get this show everyone this new list of research infrastructure roles. Cool, and it's all rendered in the book. Woohoo, great stuff. Very, very exciting. So with that in mind, we encourage you to get involved with the chapter. We'd love to see you in the GitHub repository. Um, and if you'd want to get into the, involved in any of the translation efforts, you can also join the team there. Um, but also just encourage you to use the turning way for your work. Um, and we hope we see you in a community space sometime soon. So that in mind, again, thanks to all the community of contributors and users, all the people that make uh, the turning way what it is. Um, we're excited to uh, share more of your work in this space um, with folks involved in big team science. And 
last set of acknowledgements. Thanks to you all for being here and and seeing. Thank you so much today, everyone.